Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Richard Widmark, Paul Douglas, and Joyce McKenzie in Panic in the Streets. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keelan. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. You know, a chief source of civic pride is the Federal Public Health Service in our American cities. Combined with the police forces and local governments, they wage a relentless battle against disease. In tonight's play, Panic in the Streets, we combine the vigilance of these men with a thrilling manhunt, a search for the murderers of a man who has brought a plague to one of our waterfront cities, a plague that, if not immediately controlled, would bring terror and disaster to the entire country. As our players from the original 20th Century Fox cast, we have two of their most luminous stars, Richard Widmark and Paul Douglas. And as their co-star, charming and talented Joyce McKenzie. You know, so often we find that health and beauty go hand in hand, such as daily complexion care with gentle Lux toilet soap. For lovely ladies find themselves glowing with a fresh, natural beauty when they are loyal to their Lux soap facials. Now the curtain rises on Panic in the Streets, starring Richard Widmark as Dr. Clinton Reed, Paul Douglas as Captain Warren, and Joyce McKenzie as Nancy. It's late at night, the deserted waterfront of a large southern city. He went down there, Blackie. Down there, next to the warehouse. What's the rush? You can't get away. Blackie, he he, 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 did, he didn't mean nothing, honest. He didn't mean just... nothing. They were his cards, Paul. He takes 190 bucks from me. Yeah. Then he says he don't want to play no more. Well, Blackie don't like that, see? You told us he was your cousin, Paul. What kind of a guy is this? I don't know, Blackie. He, he just got into the country today. Besides, he, he's sick. You could see how sick he was. Not too sick to win my hundred and ninety. Blackie, there he is. He just stuck behind them trucks, sir. I want my money, Paulie. All right. C -c -c Come on, let's get it. Hello. Yeah. Oh, now look, Paul. I thought I told you I was going to take the whole day off. Cleaver? Who's Cleaver? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. What do you mean there's something funny about it? Yeah. Well, all right, I'll come down. And, uh, look, you better hold everybody there that had any contact with the body just in case. No, no, I'm glad you called. Okay. Serious? Oh, it's always serious when they can't diagnose something. It's a police case, Nancy. Homicide. Cleaner, bring back my uniform. Go ahead and change. I'll bring it in. Hey, Mom! Is lunch ready yet? I'm hungry. You and your father. What's the rush? Gotta meet the kids. We're going to the movies. And what are you using for money? It's okay, Mom. Gave it to me. Oh, Clint. First day I've had off in six weeks. Wasn't even going to shave. Just slop around, relax. Did you give Tommy a quarter for the movies? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Clint, look. He may be an only child, but I'm not going to have him acting like one. I gave you the answer to that one two years ago. Yeah? Yeah. Well, since you're being so free with your money, what about this bill? Well, Bill's, uh... Oh, from Whitfield's, huh? Forty-two bucks. Uh-huh, the same one, Clint. It's getting embarrassing, really. What, for forty-two dollars? Now, listen, honey, one of these days we'll walk into that store and we'll pay cash. One of what days? Well, one of these days. Mm-hmm. When one of those oil companies decides that they can't lay a pipeline in Arabia 
without the services of Dr. Clinton Reed. All right. The man with the high forehead and the disposition of an old... Oh, Clint, I don't mean that. I like high foreheads. Yeah, I'll bet you do. Well, they've taken a lot of guys from the public health service. I know they have, honey. Oh, you do, huh? Well, I've got to get out of here. Clint. Hmm? Try and get home early. Yeah, sure, sure. And, uh, look, honey, why don't you let Tommy keep that quarter, huh? You just handle your business and I'll take care of mine. Okay. Tommy. So long, Tommy. And don't sit through it more than twice, you hear? Okay, Pop. Call me, Mom? Yes, but I wasn't fast enough. Skip it. Well, Doc, you and Gaffney make up your minds yet? When did they bring the body here to the morgue, Cleaver? Oh, about two hours ago. I did the autopsy right away. How many men might have handled it? You and how many others? I guess about a dozen, Doc. They're down the hall now, waiting. Good. Who are they? Oh, a couple of assistants, the boys from the ambulance police. But what about it, Doc? The microscope doesn't lie, Cleaver. Those slides show practically pure culture. Holy smoke. And keep away from the body. Can you have it cremated? Oh, I suppose so, I don't Doc, want any I... supposing. I want him cremated right away. Okay. And I want everything that's touched him buried or sterilized. Everything. You understand? Sure, Doc. Sure. And get those slides into a sterilizer right away, will you, Paul? Right. Oh, they sent over the serum and the streptomycin just before you got here. Good. We'll all take a shot and get to work on the men down the hall. Two cc's. Right. Thanks for calling us, Cleaver. You did just the right thing. You sure never know, do you? No, you don't. Uh, what do we say to those guys out there? Well, uh, just that the dead man may have had some communicable disease. That we're giving him shots just to play it safe. I better warn you, some of them won't like the idea. Well, maybe they'd like ten days in quarantine better. But whatever you say, Kleber, not a word about what it really is. Okay, Doc. Call up your sleep, Clint. No, take Kleber first. Kleber? I'm going to call the mayor. Let's hope he can see me right away. <laughs> Dr. Reed of the United States Public Health Service. Doctor, I believe you know our city health commissioner. I'm glad you could get here, Dr. Mackey. Not at all, Reed. Not at all. This police commissioner, Quinn, Captain Warren of the Homicide Detail, Mr. Wynant, my assistant. There should have been more of us, Doctor, but 20 minutes is much notice. Uh, notice of what, Mr. Mayor? This is all very mysterious. Dr. Reed phoned me from the city morgue. He has something to tell us about pneumonic plague. Plague? What plague? Pneumonic plague, Mr. Quinn. The pulmonary form of bubonic plague, the black death of the Middle Ages. Its death incidence is practically 100%. Who do you say he was? I'm Dr. Reed of the United States Public Health Service, and one of our jobs is to keep plague out of this country. You see, gentlemen, bubonic plague is spread by the rat flea, which is why we watch all ships and ports. Pneumonic, on the other hand, can be spread like a common cold on the breath, the sneezes, or sputum of its victims. But I still don't know why we were called into this. Because this morning, Mr. Winant, right here in your city, your police found the body of a man infected with this disease. Well, Dan, our reports show the man died with two bullet wounds. Right, Captain? That's right, sir. Heart and lungs. The police surgeon Regardless of what the police surgeon said, he would have died within 12 hours, bullet wounds or not. But what he did die of was two thirty-eight caliber slugs. He had pneumonic plague. But he died of... Drop it, Tom. Dr. Mackey? As you know, Henry, I've not been to the morgue, but I see no reason why my department can't make a thorough analysis. There's a very good reason why you can't, sir. I had the body destroyed, cremated. Had it destroyed? It was a prime source of contamination. Now, we've inoculated everybody who might have had contact with the body except one man. The man or men who committed the murder. Now, the killer wasn't within ten feet of him. I can prove it. Was he shot on that riverbank, Captain? Of course not. He was dumped off the Canal Street Pier sometime between, oh, 5 and 5.30 a.m. How did he get to the Canal Street Pier? How do I know? Somebody must have... Exactly. Yeah. The point is that whoever dumped him there might very well be walking around with incipient plague. Oh, now, wait a minute. Sorry, Dan, but we've got to work on the supposition that the doctor is right. But after all, we don't know the identity of the dead man. We have no possible idea of motivation. You still don't know who he is? That's right, Doctor. We still don't know. 
There was nothing in his clothes that could identify him. What about fingerprints? Not on file in our records, sir. We sent them on to the FBI, but we've had no answer yet. He was maybe 40, 42 years old, 5 foot 9, and weighed 151 pounds. Well, but surely there's something, something... There was a label in the suit. It came from Haifa. That's Palestine or Arabia. His shoes were bought in Buenos Aires. Maybe he was a sailor. We don't know yet. Some of the boys who saw him said he looked kind of, well, like an Armenian or maybe a Czech. You see, these things take a little time, Doctor. Only we don't have time. Also, we don't have the body. Now, look. If the killer is incubating pneumonic plague, he could start spreading it within 48 hours. 48 hours? Yes, Captain Warren. We have 48 hours. Shortly after that, you'll have the makings of an epidemic. Oh, Commissioner, what's the use of kidding ourselves? We can't turn up an unknown killer in two days. Warren's absolutely right. Now, if you want to believe the doctor here... I'm sorry, doctor, but frankly, I honestly don't. But if you want to believe him, there's only one way to handle this. Give the story to the newspapers. Get it on the radio. And have everybody who was in contact with the dead man leave town? No, you can't give it to the press. Now, I, I, I might be an alarmist. I, I, I may be entirely wrong. I don't know. But I've seen this disease work. And I'm telling you that if it ever gets loose, the result will be more horrible than any of you can imagine. And the key to the whole thing lies right here now in the next 48 hours. You can take me at my word or whatever you like. Well, what can we do? Find the man who killed him. Warren, put your best men on it. Yes, sir. And you can work with the doctor personally. If that's an order, sure. It's an order. And I know you can count on our health department. Of course. All the assistance possible. All right, Tom. Make your arrangements with the doctor here. Take any emergency action you feel necessary. I think the only way to... Hope I wasn't too rough just now. (laughs) On me? (laughs) No. No, no, no. I meant the rest of them. Still have a feeling they don't believe me. But I know how serious this can be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if I were you, I'd start worrying about what you're going to do when we don't turn up with your boy. Well, if that's your attitude, we're not going to get very far. Mr. Reed, I was assigned to this. I'll do the best I can, but let's not get the idea that I'm a sailor in your Navy. And if you think that you're... Hello, Warren. I've been looking for you. You found me, Neff, and you're interrupting me. Heard you just had a meeting. Little pictures. Well, maybe my paper's interested. What's the score? Some complaints about your newspaper. We figure we ought to fumigate it. Oh, no, no. You know you can't hide anything. When it breaks, I'll spell your name wrong. Yeah, that's what I told them. We just ought to fumigate you. You boys worry me when you take off on your own. No sense in our both worrying. Goodbye, Neff. No, just a second. I said goodbye. Well, that's right. You did. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, where are you going, Mr. Reed? I don't know. Depends on you. Now, listen, Doc, I got a job to do. Just a routine sort of a job like rounding up every suspect in town. I'm supposed to be pretty good at it, so why don't I call you if I need you? You mean you'd uh, like to get rid of me, Captain? Uh, No, Okay, uh... then I'll go with you. All right. Come on. Well, you can't say you're not getting action, Doc. See that mob? We got half the two-bit criminals in town out there. I wish you sounded more confident of getting information. We'll get plenty of information about pickpockets, sneak thieves, and wife beaters. But about your murderer? Not a chance. Mm. All right, Scott, come on in, come on in. Dr. Reed, Lieutenant Scott. How are you? Good evening, sir. Captain, that reporter, Neff, is looking for Well, get rid of him. Yes, sir. Well, is that all you got to tell me? No, sir. We checked Mobile and Champa. Yeah? No record of the dead man. Nothing on file with the FBI. Hmm. The lab found traces of fish in his clothes. Also, rust-resistant paint and salt. The fish traces could be shrimp. Well, it's obvious he came off a boat, so we ought Unless to Unless he and... walked through a fish market, bought four pounds of shrimp, and brushed against a freshly painted fire escape. Yeah. Scott, I suppose these are all the photographs we got? Yeah, that's all, sir. Okay. Oh, uh, Captain, the yeah. uh, the boys are sort of wondering why they have to take these shots. They've been wondering, have they? Whether they think they are in a summer camp because the commissioner says so, that's why. Oh, well, that's what I told them. Yes, sir. Roll up your sleeve. What do you mean? 
What do you think you're going to do? Roll up your sleeve. Well, why should I take one of those things? Because the commissioner says so. And I told the commissioner, roll it up. <laughs> Anything funny, Scott? Oh, uh, no, sir. No, sir. What's the matter? You guys ain't got enough work to do? Oh, yeah. Oh, get on it! All right. Well, you satisfied? No, I'm not. Those suspects you're bringing in, if there's not a chance of getting anywhere, what are you doing it for? I'm doing it because the commissioner told me to, and I'm doing it this way because it's the only way you left me. But why I'm doing it, I don't know. Now, look, how can I make you believe that what believe we're doing... Believe it? Believe? Why shouldn't I believe you, doctor? You're a smart fellow, a college man. You probably wouldn't make something out of nothing just to be important. You know, my mother always told me that if you look deep enough in anybody, you'd always find some good. But I don't know. With apologies to your mother, that's the second mistake she made. <laughs> I should have seen that one coming. Come on, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. I'm busy. I want to buy you a cup. I'm busy. Come on, let's see if you can drag that load across the street. Look, Captain, do you have a family? Are you married? No. My wife died eight years ago. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be personal. The doc I got said she had neuralgia, but she didn't. It was a brain tumor. You don't think much of me as a doctor either, do you? Keep asking questions, doc. You finally get answers. No. Mind if I ask why? Government job, civil service, 30 years, a pension. What do you make? I think it runs about the same as a police captain. Now, look, Warren, the reason I asked if you had a family was that, uh, well, I thought if you had some children, you might realize the seriousness of this. I haven't got any kids. Well, thousands of people do. And think what could happen to them. I'll think thing. anything you like, but I'll still say I'm doing everything I can. Look, the man who was killed came off a boat. Probably he was smuggled into the country. Now, we've checked every boat. We're combing the waterfront. And we're hauling in every man that could possibly know anything about it. Well, from what I've seen, they're not too anxious to talk to. Well, maybe they ain't. Maybe they want to talk to the mothers. Maybe they want to talk to you. What can I do about it? Offer a reward. Promise immunity for information. And get a couple more experts from Washington to help me out. Well, you could use them. You'll never see see the day. All right, do you mind if I do something on my own? Yes, I do. Well, what am I supposed to do? Just sit here and watch? Listen, Doc, I'm taking a chance. You may be right. You can take a chance. I know what I'm doing, and let me do it. As a matter of fact, you'd help us both out if you went home and went to bed. Okay. I'm not going to argue with you anymore. And I'm not going to wait until the facts penetrate that thick skull of yours. There just isn't that much time. There's for the coffee. Now, Mr. William Keeley, our producer. Act two of Panic in the Street, starring Richard Widmark as Dr. Clinton Reed, Paul Douglas as Captain Warren, and Joyce McKenzie as Nancy. Twenty hours ago, a man was murdered. A man carrying germs even more deadly than the bullets that killed him. In every corner of the city, the search goes on. Who was he? Who killed him? In the seamiest part of town, not far from the docks, there's a shabby store. It's lined with washing machines, a laundry service. It's long past closing time, but in the back of the store... Well, I got here, Blackie. I'm all packed, just like you told me. You're nervous, Fitch. What are you nervous for? Where's Poldy? Poldy? I told you to come back here with Poldy. Yeah, I, I know you did, Blackie. I went right over and told him, but he don't want to go. Why don't he want to go? I don't know, Blackie. He just don't want to go. He don't want to go. Sure, I knew it, Fitch. All day now, I got a hunch about Poldy. Oh, Blackie, please, I tell you, the cops are picking everybody up, everybody. Why? Why are they picking everybody oh, up? Blackie, you know, the guy last night, Poldy's cousin, Kochaki, he's dead. So they turned the whole town upside down for a crumb? 
Every cop in town huffing and puffing to find out who he is? Why are they doing that? Blackie, I don't, I don't know. He brought something in, see, off the boat. Drugs, maybe, a jewelry. He brought in something, and they're looking for it. Only they ain't found it. You know why? Because friend Poldy's got it. Poldy? Oh, but Poldy's a nice guy. He wouldn't do nothing. He's to... trying to put something over on me, Pitch. I'm his friend, and that's how he repays me. You find Poldy. I want to see him. Good evening. Haven't had a chance to call you till now. Are you all right? Oh, sure, I'm fine. Well, can I put on a pot of coffee? No, no, you better not, honey. I'll tell you all about it later. Oh, uh, did anybody call me? Uh, Captain Warren from the police? No. No messages, Clint. Where are you? Well, it's a seaman's hiring hall, a place where they hire sailors. Oh, looking for a new job, huh? Yeah, I'm deserting you. Shipping out on the first boat. Well, as long as you're back by morning. I'll do my best, honey. Take it easy. Could I have your attention, please? Could I have your attention for just a minute, please? The man in charge here just gave me permission to talk to you. I'm a government doctor. I have some photographs here of a man, and it's extremely important that I find out who this man is. I think he's a sailor. So would you please take a careful look at these photographs? I'll pay $50 to anybody who can tell me anything at all about this man, anything. I'm not from the police, so you can't get into any trouble. Now, if you just step up here, please. That's it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Any information at all, please. Even if you just think you've seen him. Any information at all. Well, uh, look, let me leave one of these pictures here. I'll be at that lunch counter next door. I'll stay there till 7 o'clock. You can ask me any questions you want to, and you can give me the information if you want to do that. And please try to remember. Is that clock right, mister? It's right. Ten minutes to six. Nice. Charge me rent if you want to. Here, drop this in the jukebox, will you? Excuse me. You the man who was looking for someone? That's right. Someone looking for fifty dollars? Well? He said for you to come with me. Will you? He said. Who's he? Well, you coming? Yeah. Yeah, sure I'm coming. Hold down here with the water, huh? Yeah, it is. Uh, which boat did you say? The shrimp boat. The second one, right over there. What was it you wanted to find out? This picture. I want to know if your friend has ever seen this man. Did he do something wrong? No, he did nothing wrong. Well, this is it. You can come aboard. Who are you, cop? I'm with the Public Health Service. I'm a doctor. Get in here. A doctor? That's right. I'm a doctor. This picture. I want to know who this man is. What ship he was smuggled off. Did you bring him in? Get out, blow. If you did bring him in, there's a good chance you're going to die in about three days. Who are you trying to kid? I'm not trying to kid anybody. Uh, you're a sailor. Did you ever hear of plague? Plague? This man died of it yesterday morning. Charlie. He's making it up. i never seen this guy, mister. I ain't been out of port in ten days. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you've got nothing to worry about. Mm. Sorry I bothered you. No, wait. Let him go. I won't let him go. You told me yourself the man was sick when you brought him in. Stupid fool. I'll teach him. Charlie, please. He's a doctor. Got to know what he's doing. This is $50. This here in this case is anti-plague serum. Charlie. Now roll up your sleeve and start talking. I got him off a of freighter out in the Gulf. I don't know his name and then... And I don't know nothing about him. I swung the whole deal with one of the crew. What ship? I don't know. It was night. I couldn't see. Doc, please give him the shot. What's the name of that ship? I thought I don't know. 
Now, look, this is the only hypodermic needle I've got, and it breaks very easily. Now, start talking, or you're going to get into trouble. The Nile Queen. Afraid of... The Nile Queen. All right, now, hold still. Or... Give me your arm and hold still. Hello, hello. Warren? Yeah, this is Warren. That you, Reed? Yeah. Where are you? The government wharf, Coast Guard Pier. I've got a lead, Warren. A ship a few miles out at sea. Well? All right, maybe you've got a better lead. I've got nothing. They're warming up a plane. We'll wait here 20 minutes. Can you make it out here? I can make it. Thanks. The captain's coming out, Commissioner. He just got back from the ship. I thought I'd better come down, Tom. Any luck? Well, our dead man came off that ship, all right, sir. Well, who was he? What's his name? We don't know. Half the crew can't even speak English. Two men stowed aboard at Oran. They hid in the chain locker. They got their food from a Chinese cabin boy. Then about a week ago, one of them died, and they tossed him overboard. Didn't anyone ever talk to them? They must have said something. Well, according to the cabin boy, all they did was complain about the food. They wanted the cook to make shish kebab. He remembered that much because he thought it was a big joke. Shish kebab? Yeah, it's lamb on a skewer. Armenian, I guess. Or Greek, maybe. I kind of liked it myself, Commissioner, up till now. Where's Dr. Reed? He found rats on the ship and two of the crew sick with fever, so he scared the captain into turning back. They're in quarantine now, and I told them I'd meet them. All we got to do is cover every restaurant in town that serves shish kebab. Well, it's the first break we've had. Good work, Tom. Yeah, only it was Reed who got the lead. I just went along for the ride. Yes, sir. You like a table, mister? Uh, you serve Greek food, huh? Anything you like, gentlemen. We're from the public health service. Public health? But I run a clean place. I passed inspection last month. No, no, no. It's all right. We're just trying to identify a man, that's all. Here's his picture. You know him? Has he ever been in here? Uh, no, no. You won't get into any trouble. We just want some information. He was sick, see? Contagious. We want to find out who he was and where he went. But I, I don't know. Maybe my wife knows. I, I go inside and ask her. Yeah. Okay, thanks. You know this is hopeless, don't you, Doc? This is the 11th joint we've been in. Any suggestions? Yes, we run the whole story in the newspapers. This picture, everything. I'll block every road leaving town, cover the bus stations, the railroad. No, huh? You're getting it, Warren. Slowly. They sure make them stubborn where you come from. But they're from the Board of Health. They say he was sick, Rita. Contagious. Oh, you know I don't feel good. You know I'm sick. So you come in and bother me. But he was here. That fellow Poldy brought him in. Rita, Poldy is here now. He's in the restaurant now. Alone? Alone, no. That man they call Blackie and the Fitch. You want us to get in trouble? Rita, the law. Kochak, he called him. Poldy called him Kochak. Oh, will you please stop it? I got a headache fit to kill me. I'm sick. Rita, maybe you should go home. Oh, stop fussing. Go on and tell them to mind their own business. Well, what'd your wife say? Well, I'm sorry. She doesn't know anything either. You leave the picture and maybe sometime he comes in here, eh? I don't think you'll be around for quite a while. Okay, Doc. Let's try Market Street. What's the matter, Foley? We invite you in here and you don't need a thing. I told you, Blackie, I, I, I don't feel good. I'm cold, honest, in my head. You felt good enough to make me chase you all over town. You sure you're sick, Foley? Maybe just worried, huh? Look, Foley, your cousin, Kochak. Who was he? Who was Coach? He was nothing honest. Nothing, huh? No. Just enough to have every cop in town looking for us. Every guy they're grabbing, whether he's got a record or not. Why do you suppose they're doing that, Paul? And what about the stuff he brought in? <laughs> he, he didn't bring nothing in. Uh, how should I know, Blackie? All you tell me is lies, Paul. Do you treat you like a friend, you tell me lies. I ain't lying honest, I ain't. Share and share alike, we said. Only Paul, he's just up a pole. No, no, it ain't true. <laughs> leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Sit down, bitch. 
Let him go. Yeah, but he's getting away again, Blackie. Is he? Where's Paulie going to go where we can't find him? Tell me that. Where's he going to go? Car 12, Captain Warren. Car 12, Captain Warren. Acknowledge, please. This is Warren. What is it? Commissioner Quinn, sir. He's anxious to know if you found anything in the restaurants. Yeah, a lot of greasy menus. We got about a dozen more joints to check. Tell the boss I'll call him later. Yes, sir. I have a message for Dr. Reed. Do you know where we could reach him? He's right here, Reed. This is Reed. Your office reports the city hospital has just received a call for the ambulance. Fever case, emergency. A woman. Where? What address? 124 Nichols Avenue. Any reply, doctor? Yes. Tell Gaffney at my office to get over there right away. I'll meet him there. Thanks a lot. Over. Okay with you, Warren? A lot I got to say about this case. Then let's get going. Doc? She's dead. No sign of the husband yet. Huh? I called the patrol car. They're getting him now. Where'd Gaffney go? He's upstairs starting inoculations. Mm. Hey, Doc. Hmm? No chance of a mistake? No. You couldn't miss it. What about a death certificate? It's got to be filed, and if the newspaper's got to... The doctor put down a tentative diagnosis of pneumonia with complications. That'll do for now. Uh-huh. What happened? What do you do here? It's the husband, Captain. Let him up! My wife, where is she? Where's my wife? She's in the bedroom, but uh, we can't let you go in there. Who are you? What did you do to her? Your wife is dead. No. No, you lied. Rita! Easy, Rita. mister, easy. She's dead. But the, the doctor, he telephones me. He says not to worry. She's going to be all right. I'm sorry. Remember us, Maferis? We showed you a picture of a man a few hours ago. We asked if you knew him. Maybe now you'll tell us who he was. But I, I don't know. I, I don't Stop know. Stop lying to us. He had the sickness that killed your wife. Now, who was he? His sickness killed my wife? Yes. Now, who was he? Who was he? Kochak. His name was Kochak. I, I don't know him. Uh, Polly brings him to the restaurant the overnight. Polly? Po- who's Polly? She waited on him. My wife, she brings him Who's dinner. Poldy? Poldy? Where does Poldy live? I don't know. The, 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 the Glory Hotel, I think. The Glory Hotel. Come on, Doc. There's nothing you can do for him that Gaffney can't do. Scott! Yes? Call in. I want a dozen men right away. Code 6, Gloria Hotel. <laughs> In a few moments, we'll bring you Act Three of Panic in the Street. The curtain rises on Act Three of Panic in the Street, starring Richard Widmark as Dr. Clinton Reed, Paul Douglas as Captain Warren, and Joyce McKenzie as Nancy. It's a few minutes later, the Gloria Hotel, but the man named Poldy is not to be found. And now, in the lobby... Well, there's no point in us waiting, Doc. If he shows up, I got a half a dozen uh, men Captain who can... Captain Warren, still oh. with Dr. Reed, huh? Well, I'm ready for your statement, Doctor. What statement is that, Mr. Neff? Oh, stop it, will you? You think I've been walking around with my head in a bag? A murdered hoodlum, a ship in quarantine, now a dead woman on Nichols Avenue? An idiot could figure it out. You qualify. What do you figure? Well, I figure the guy had smallpox or cholera or something. And I want to know Wait why minute, you Neff. haven't... It isn't smallpox, and it isn't cholera. It's plague. Pneumonic plague. Plague? That's why we can't let you have the story. 
You can't let me have it. That's right. With the chance of an epidemic? That's right. You can't print it. The public's got a right to know what's going on, and no two-bit civil servant... Regardless of your opinion, I've got to do what I think is best. Did you do what you thought was best for that woman who just died? If the doctor had known what was going on, couldn't he have saved her, couldn't he? I don't know. You don't know. Because you don't know, you don't want anybody else to know. All right, drop it, Neff. If your editor's got a story, let him go ahead and print it. The editor doesn't have it. But he's going to get it right now. Oh, he doesn't have it, huh? What do you know? Scott. Yes. This man's under arrest. What do you think you're trying to pull? Incommunicado, Scott. He speaks to nobody. What's the charge, big shot? Loitering, public nuisance, anything you can spell. Come on, let's go, Mr. Neff. Warren, you're crazy. I can have your badge for this. You know I can. If I'd have been busted by every newspaper man that tried to get my bars, I'd be mopping floors in the hall of justice years ago. Now out! Thanks, Warren. Wait for me in the car. Officer? Yes, sir? That, uh, reporter. Can he really make trouble? Trouble? If his newspaper wanted to put the pressure on Warren, he'd be lucky if he could get a job mopping floors. He's a right guy, Doc. I hope he knows what he's doing. Yeah, so do I. Clint, is that you? In the garage, honey. No, don't. Don't come any closer. Just stay where you are. Contagion case, huh? Yep. Just changed clothes. Another uniform to be decontaminated. You didn't catch it yourself, did you? You look a little beat. Yeah, I look so good normally. Clint, did you just drop something? Whitfield's bill. I didn't pay it. You can pay it tomorrow. No, I can't pay it tomorrow, and I can't pay it the next day. I spent the money. Now, look, when I get the dough, I'll pay it. Just, just, just stop pestering me about it. Clint! I, I didn't say anything. What happened? I'm sorry, honey. I'm awful sorry. I, uh, I gave 50 bucks to somebody. No, no, I don't mean about the money. Well, anyway, I, I spent it on something for the department. Look, uh, be a good kid and make me some coffee, will you? I gotta go right out again. Go right out? Yeah. But you'll need more than coffee. Just coffee, Nancy. But, Clint, if you haven't had any... Coffee! To... I'll put it right on. I'll wait on the porch. Tommy okay? He's fine, Clint. Did you get any sleep last night? I don't know. I guess I must have. It's plague, Nancy. Pneumonic plague. Plague? Yep. Here? Whoever's carrying it's still wandering around. Oh, Clint, why don't you lie down just for an hour or so? Uh, no. no, I can't. Gaffney's waiting for me. He hasn't slept either. Gaffney's younger than you are. Honey, Methuselah is younger than I am tonight. Clint. Hmm? What is it? What's wrong? Oh, I'm just out of gas, Nancy. I'm tired. I'm fed up. I... I'll go make the coffee. Okay. You know, today I took a perfectly nice guy. A cop. Not the smartest guy in the world, but who is? So what do I do? I, I, I push him around, make a lot of smart cracks about him, tell him off all day long. And he winds up proving he's four times a man I'll ever be. I don't believe it. Why do I do that, huh? Well, I do the same thing to you, too, don't I? Yes. Yes, you do. Every once in a while, you get a guilty feeling that, that you've been missing out, that you owe something to me or, or to Tommy or somebody or other, and, and then you take it out on whoever happens to be around. Mostly I'm around. So? So stop feeling sorry for yourself, because you're a pretty lucky guy. Lucky? Holy smoke. You're doing exactly the sort of work you planned on doing when you entered medical school. How many people can say that? I don't know. All I do know is that I've got exactly $38 in a savings account. And if there's a plague here, you're the most important man in town. And... Not only to me. Yes, ma'am. And, and Clint, not only that. I've, I've just, oh, I love you, Clint. I love you. Hello? 
Yes. Yes, he's here, Captain Warren. Right away? Yes. I'll tell him. Hey, Doc. Doc, over yeah. here. What's up, boy? I don't know, but it ain't good. Did you find Poldy? No, no, no. The mayor called. Get hold of you, he says. Come over here to the park. Wait under the statue. What am I, a bookie? Mm. Ah, somebody's coming. What? Oh, yeah, that's him. The other guy with him's his secretary. Oh, I see. Sorry I had to call you here, but my office and my home are crawling with the reporters. Now I find you've arrested one. What's the matter with you, Captain? You lost your mind. Now, just what imbecility... He pumps... did it on my authority, Mr. Mayor. Your authority? Yes, sir. You're an advisor here, Dr. Reed. You can oblige me by confining your authority to your own duties. Uh, we got a line on one of the dead man's friends, Mayor, a fellow named Poldy, and we Have you made an arrest yet? Oh, uh, no, sir. But... I'm sorry, Captain, but we can't wait any longer. May I ask what that means? It means that I'm giving the facts to Neff as soon as I leave here. Believe me, our only chance now for full cooperation is to inform the public. Inform the public and the men we're looking for will leave the city. Now, I've told you once and I'll tell you again. Anybody leaving here with plague endangers the entire country. The entire country hasn't got it. We have. This problem lies right here in our own community. What community? Anybody that leaves here can be in any city in the country within ten hours. And whatever disease he has goes right with him. I know that. Then think of it when you're talking about communities. We're all in a community, the same one. In any event, there are about four more hours before the morning edition hits the streets. Uh, then I'm wasting my time here. Yeah, do what you can, Tom. I couldn't hold Neff, Doctor. Strangely enough, I I agree with you, but I, I couldn't hold him. Uh, Mayor, I beg your pardon? Well, why not? Mind if I take off now, sir? Uh, go ahead, but I want to be on the radio in the morning at 9 o'clock. I'm, uh, I'm taking the kids upriver to their grandmothers. Oh, I'll be back by 8.30, but I've got to do it. Well, here we go. He'll be back in the morning and he'll stay. Yeah, yeah, sure he will. And kids are kids. Nevertheless, here we go. Sass, Baldy. See? Just Blackie and me. We come to see how you're feeling. Blackie. We'd have come sooner if we know you're here at your old lady's place. You don't feel so good, huh, Polly? The nurse. Where, where, where's the nurse? What nurse do you mean, Polly? The old lady told me a nurse from the social service, Blackie. Ah, don't worry about the nurse, Polly. I sent your kid brother for my doctor. He's going to get you well. I ain't going to get well. I'm going to die. No, 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 Polly. You won't die. We're going to help you. So, now maybe you tell me, huh? What did Poldy bring in, huh? What did Kochak bring in off that ship, huh, Poldy? I, I don't know. Nothing. I, I, I don't know. It must be lying around someplace and with a fortune, huh? The way the cops are looking for it. My mother. Tell my mother. She I... went to church to pray for you. But well, we won't leave you, Poldy. We're your friends, so talk. Talk! Cut it out, Poldy. I've been real patient, haven't I? So where's the stuff? Where is it? Blackie, Blackie, please, he's too sick. The doc will be here soon, Baldy. The best I care for my friend. So you just tell me what... did you people get in this Blackie, room? Blackie, Blackie the nurse. Are you members of the family? What? Oh, oh, we're his friends. Well, clear out of here. This man's got to be taken to a hospital. He ain't gone. I've just reported the case. An ambulance is on the way over. Then send it back, because he ain't gone. I brought the doctor, Blackie. Uh, good morning, all. My goodness, three flights of stairs. Well, a nurse. Who is he, miss? He's a very sick man. I phoned for an ambulance. Uh, I see. He's going to stay here. Tell her to get out, Doc. But if the nurse says... Now, Vince, you don't want your brother in a charity ward, do you? Some intern working on him? Doc, please. Oh, we'll take good care of him, son. Probably just a touch of malarial fever. Well, doctor... His respiration, he can hardly breathe. Well, there's no need for excitement, nurse. Yes, sir, I, I understand, but... And if uh, you take the patient without permission, You, I... you're his brother. Yes, ma'am. I can't force treatment on you, but if you take my advice, you'll get him to a hospital just as fast as you can. I, I'd better find my mother. That's right, son. You run along and look for your mother. Oh. 
This man's in bad shape, Blackie. Yes, fix him up so he can talk some sense. He's got to talk. Give him a shot or something. It's going to take more than a shot. He'd be better off in a hospital. Now, there's a little private place I have access to. It's rather expensive, however. Never mind that. How do we get him out of here? Now, I mean, fast. Well, if you and your friend here could lift that mattress and get him down to my car... Your car? Okay. The back way, Fitch. The fire escape. Nurse, wait a minute, please. Did you just come out of that tenement? Well? I'm Dr. Reed, Government Health Service. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. The city hospital just notified my office that they were sending an ambulance to this address. It is a fever case? Yes, doctor, the third floor. The name's Poldy. Poldy? And if you ask me, there's something better. Doctor! Doctor, look, the fire escape! They're taking him down the fire escape. Wait for the ambulance, nurse. Don't leave here. Oh, really, doctor? I think this is something for the police. So do I. They're on the way right now. Get out of the way, mister. We've got a sick man. Here. I'm a doctor. I want to take a look at him. We've got our own doctor. Get out of the way. Stay where you are. I want to see him. Get out of the way. Blackie. Blackie, look. Police. You want to see him, do you? All right. Here he comes. <laughs> Go ahead, Warren. This is Quinn. What happened? Holdy's dead. There are two other men who are after them now. They took off from the tenement, headed for the waterfront. Scott just radioed they're in the coffee warehouse. I've got Reed with me. A commissioner, this is Signal 50. Coffee warehouse, Signal 50. <laughs> Watchmen, then they went for the roof. Okay, start at opposite ends of the building. Cover every skylight, every window, every door. Yes, sir. Get rifles, submachine guns. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We can't have those men shot. They're no good to us dead. What are we supposed to do? Play tag with them? These are armed hoodlums. They've killed one man already. I know, I know. Now keep your shirt on, will you? you... Doc! Doc, where do you think you're going, Doc? Get back here, Doc. Get back. Blackie, Blackie, I can't go no further. We gotta quit. We'll never get out of here. You ain't quitting, bitch. I got you off the roof tonight. Yeah, but where are we? I don't even know where we are. We're under the wharf. I can't see where I'm going. Just Blackie. keep crawling. We got maybe a hundred feet more to go. There's a rowboat over there. I seen it from the roof. A lot of good that'll do. There's a ship at the next stack. It's getting ready to shove off. Well, I'm getting you aboard. You two men, listen to me. Get down. You shouldn't have shot Blackie. Now they know we're under Keep here. Keep going, you hear? Holy had play. We had play. I can't, Blackie. I can't go you anywhere. You hear me? Holy had play. I'm a doctor. I can cure you. Blackie. Blackie, he had plague. I touched him, Blackie. I touched him. It's your only chance. <laughs> Give yourselves up. It's got to be here, the robot. I saw it. Stay where you are. There it is. Get in the boat. <laughs> Get in it to shut up. <laughs> Lucky, what are you going to do? That guy, I'm waiting for him behind the pylon. Just let him go. Lucky. You there! You in the boat, where's that other man? If he's with you, tell him to stand up. All right, come on, come on, get out of that rock! <laughs> Doc! Doc! Where are you, Doc? Cover the wharf. I know he's down here. I give up. I give up. Those down here. Give up, huh? Tell him I killed Kochak, huh? No, no you don't. <laughs> There were two of them, Warren. Two of them. Yeah, yeah, we know, we know. Now, take it easy, Doc. You got a lump on your you head, get him. Yeah, we got the fat boy. The other guy shot him. Shot him? It's all right. It's all right. He's going to live at least long enough to talk. What about the other one? He jumped in the drink and started swimming. There's yeah. 50 cops looking for him right now. Now, come on. Take it easy. Will you? Here. I'll give you a hand. Here we go. Up on the water. Come on. You've got to find him, Warren. He's a carrier. If he gets Carry away, him. we might... Swimming toward that dock. Turn back to our fire. Turn back to our fire! Put down your rifle. What? 
You heard me. Just put it down. He ain't going no place. But if he reaches the dock, Captain, that man's still on. Look at him, will you? He's reached the dock, all right. He's climbing up the rope to that ship. Yeah, there's just one hitch. He's got to get past that rat guard, that metal shield around the rope. Tell him what it's for, Doc. To keep rats off ships. Rats. All sorts of rats. You're right, Captain. He can't pass it. He's letting go. He's falling. Okay, Scott. Take a couple of men and fish him out of the water. That's fair. Come on, Doc. I'll drive you home. Okay. Oh, yeah, and I almost forgot to tell you, they found a case of perfume under the sink in police tenement. Smuggled, no custom stamps. Perfume? Is it worth anything? Oh, two, three hundred bucks. You want a bottle? It's right there in the back seat, huh? No, thanks. Not today. Car 17. Car 17. 37. 23rd and Katina. A dog barking. Check with residents. Ah. Well, back to the old grind again. Huh? A dog barking. They got a lot to worry about sending a what squad are you car so out. What tough about? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so long, Doc. Keep me in mind, won't you? Yeah, right, Captain. So long. So long. Well, hello there, neighbor. Oh, hello, Mr. Green. How are you? Oh, fine, fine. You know, Dr. Tommy tells me you haven't been around in a couple of days. It's none of my business, but you ought to spend some time with that boy. He's a great kid. Yeah, well, uh, I, uh, I've been kind of busy. Your own son comes first, you know. <laughs> nice seeing you, Doctor. Thanks. As a result, Dr. Mackett, the Board of Health, has been able to issue a most reassuring bulletin. All contact has been found and inoculated. The danger is over. Hi, I will honey. Repeat. Hi. There's no cause for alarm. All Sounds like Mackett's got things under control. He's a good man. Today, Turn it off. Well, anything new around here? Uh, not a thing. Oh, some mail for you. Oh, thanks. What's that? Well, oh, it's uh, just a bill from the cleaners. Uniforms. A little dirty. Well, what are you smiling about? What's the big joke? You come here. What a mushy day. In just a moment, we want you to meet our stars in person, and Mr. Keeley will tell you all about next week's show. Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. And now you can all sit back and relax and join me in well-earned applause for Richard Widmark, Paul Douglas, and Joyce McKenzie. Well, Dick, you've made quite a change in character since your last appearance on our stage. Well, I guess so, Bill. For a while there, I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life as a villain or a moron. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly have been the hero lately, Dick, particularly in Halls of Montezuma, where you played a marine lieutenant. You know, I started out as sort of a comedy villain, <laughs> but I'm a hero now, too, playing policeman yet. <laughs> Joyce, you know, uh, you seem to have changed, too. You started out to be a pretty girl, and um, you've gone right on getting prettier. Oh, it's nice of you to say so, Bill. And that would be credit to Lux Toilet Soap. It's always been my favorite complexion care. Say, uh, Dad, uh, yes, don't, you <laughs> don't you continue on the police force in your next picture for 20th Century Fox, 14 hours? Yes, I do. And if they think tonight's play was exciting, wait till they see me spend 14 hours trying to talk a guy out of jumping off a building. Yeah, there you go again, always bragging about the police force. Why don't you join the Marines and live dangerously? For the same reason they put me on the police force, flat feet. <laughs> and furthermore, <laughs> you know... Now, 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 hold it, boys. 
You know, I think 20th Century Fox is going to have to cast you two in the same branch of the government to sort of uh, end the argument. The Internal <laughs> Revenue Department? <laughs> in the meantime, what about your cast for next week? And what's the play to be? Well, Joyce, next week we'll take you back to the days of our western frontier by presenting She Wore a Yellow Ribbon. And as the stars of this historic RKO drama, we'll have the man recently voted the most popular actor of the year, John Wayne. And co-starring will be glamorous Mala Powers. That'll be great entertainment, Bill. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Come back soon. <laughs>